Hey guys, this is Tom Box, and welcome to part two of the Ultimate Counter Guide. Might be the only final part left if we do this one quickly enough, but once again, welcome to the channel, Mr. Squiddy. Guys, check out Hello. Squiddy. Check out Squiddy. Uh, man, you've actually been in this space for a very, very long time. Before I was in this yeah, space. It's kind of sad to think about how long I played Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> oh, I know. I mean, I've been playing since like 2002. Yeah. <laughs> but like not very good. You know, back in the day, I was a kid. I was a kid. I was not very good. I thought that mm -hmm. I, I thought my tomato control deck was was the bomb kind of deal. Ugh. No, most of them blue eyes, no tributes. That was me on the playground, on the gravel, no sleeves. No sleeves. Let's go. Me. First edition yeah. blue eyes right yep. into the dirt. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god. I actually had no sleeve. Oh no. I was. Uh, my friends gave me two different sleeves. I played with red sleeves and gold sleeves because I couldn't afford a pack of sleeves. So they gave me leftover sleeves, and I used that as my sleeves. <laughs> yeah, I had like Pokemon sleeves, and they were like shaking around. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. Or oh, you remember those really, really shiny Ultra Pro sleeves? The really oh, wavy yes. looking ones? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we're like so. we're showing our age. Do it. Let's do it. Okay. Drop in. I'm ready. All right. Make sure you guys drop a like. And I guess let's go. So we're going to go calm to calm here to the matchups. Of course, across the top, we have Cashier, Branded, Labyrinth, Naturi, Runic, and Sprite. And uh, the six cards that we're going to throw in here for going second uh, are Book of Eclipse slash Moon, Evenly Matched, Tribute Removal, which would include Santa Claus, Lava Golem, you know, Sphere Mode, your your typical Kaiju. And we have Back Row Removal from Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twister, you know, Harpy's Feather Duster, Triple Tactics Talent, which would we could also include as Triple Tactics Thrust. You know, we, we can talk about it in both senses. And a change of heart. Honestly, in terms of the variations, in terms of going second cards, there isn't too many in this particular format. It's really kind of fell down to these few cards for the most part because of how, you know, Kashira is, you know, kind of the focal point when it comes to, you know, you need to side against that card or that deck. If you don't, you, well, you would pretty much have a really rough time. You know, what the one deck that can't go unpunished, but that also kind of shapes the rest of the format around it. Like it opens a lot of, you know, opportunities for other decks to play when they dedicate so much to Kashira. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when you have the best deck in the format that's also banishing everything, you do have to de dedicate a lot of cards so you can play. Yeah, I mean, Graveyard, you know, you can say goodbye to that if uh, the Arise Arch sticks on the board. But here we go. So today we're going to go column to column. Uh, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this one. So make sure you guys drop a like. So let's start off with Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon. I think uh, we all know this. It's just, just truth that it is a really good... I almost want to put a double check on this. So guys, double check mm -hmm. means it's a complete blowout. Uh, but it's not exactly a complete blowout anymore now because there's, you know... Um, let's just put a single check on this. It's really good. It does turn off yeah. the entire board if it does land. And usually that entire board is really just one Arise Heart now because no one's doing the lock anymore. But that's kind of the game here. Like, when when will it be long enough to the point where people forget about it? You know what I mean? Yeah, and then they revert to their old ways when no one's playing Nibiru or vice versa. I mean, Nibiru but... is a pretty dead card. It's a deterring card, but it's also like the weird card where it's just not very good against a lot of decks. But it's mm -hmm. there to kind of keep Cashier in check. It's like a, the necessary evil. It's like a little martyr. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm in check. But yeah, I agree with one check mark. I think like people are playing Lance now, and some people are even siding Magic Deflector. Um, obviously, Ash stops Book of Eclipse as well, so there are direct counters to these cards, which is a little unfortunate. But when they get off, you know, you're probably going to be able to play. So yeah, there, enough. It's good enough. I mean, even Book of Moon, a single Book of Moon will always bait the lands. And the, the thing is, you want to be able to bait out that lands. You don't want to have a poor timing on the on your spell trap disruption on that card where it doesn't work, and now you're eating it. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Even the match, it's. I want to say it's a blow card, but honestly, okay, it deserves two things. I would give it a check by base because it clears out all the other stuff around the Arise Heart. But it's mm -hmm. not necessarily a full-on win. I, right. I don't know. I, I call it a pick your brain on this particular subject matter. Cash Tira. Yeah, I definitely agree. Because, you know, they have the Arise Heart still chilling there. So if you can't play 
you know, if your deck is a graveyard based deck, you just still can't play. You have, no, have to have another card to pair with that to get rid of the Arise Heart, more or less. And the Arise Heart actually gets materials when you banish stuff. So yes. if it was an Arise Heart with like one material, they're going to get a, two materials now. So you're kind of like, you're giving it more food to be able to banish your cards. And uh, I want to point out one thing. Like, a lot of people, you know, when they go for the Ogre play, they add, like, Preparations. But I don't think Preparation is correct, because Preparation, you're going to eat the Evenly, and then you're just going to lose the Preparation for free. Unless you're searching Preparation as, like, a bait, because you actually, honestly, search a big... Or you already had a Big Bang in hand. Now, the reason yeah. why letting Big Bang get banished is a good thing is that so that you can attach that Big Bang back onto your Arise Heart, which means you're actually dealing with Arise Heart plus a Fenrir on the board now. It is much rougher than you think, which is why when they eat the Evenly match... Uh, you better hope that there is no Big Bang. So the first search typically from the Ogre right now, I personally, it should be the Big Bang first, just so that you do have a second follow-up. So that when you do- You know, that's a good point. I wasn't really thinking about that, but now that you say it, yeah, you know, having that Fenrir access and then, you know, having the Big Bang is really yeah. pretty Three minute Arise Rise Heart, even if you set the Big Bang, here's the best part. If they don't have that blowout, they can't actually play the game because you're about to, like, if they put up a token on the board, you're about to wipe their entire board off the face and they have to yeah. keep the token. And if they do side to, decide to evenly, guess what? You get to keep a Fenrir. So, the, you know, the Big Bang gives you an additional follow-up, which is uh, actually pretty nice. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's a lot of players are playing around evenly now too. They just go A-Rise set like one card. Yep. And you're like, okay, and uh, my all right. <laughs> and like they try to avoid you know burning their birth or like they double up on the birth so that if they have a uh, unicorn, they're prepared to actually drop a birth again. And that's yes. why it's a uh, that's kind of the thing you need to know. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's the knowledge I'm sharing here. So it's good, but you need a follow up. Yeah. You you need follow up for sure. Uh, tribute based removal. You know this. This is this is this is the blowout. <laughs> this is the blowout. You, yeah. you throw a kaiju. Okay, the game, yeah, it's mostly <laughs> over. It doesn't matter if they got big bang or anything. Things are in the graveyard yeah. now. One of the only things that'll save you from the lock five as well. The five zone lock. You know, tributing off that one Shangri La that's locking three it will allow you to free those zones and kind of play. But yep, it, it's spicy though. Like you never know what they're do nowadays. Cash tier players are unpredictable. If they go your eyes pass. Your Lava Golem's kind of dead. Your Gamma Seal will get value. But if they go full combo, the Gamma Seal's a little worse than Lava Golem. So it's like... Yep. It depends what they do, but yeah, they're very good. Absolutely. Uh, next up, uh, back row removal. I'd say this is really just mediocre to p potentially bad. Like, if they cited in stuff like Epidemic Eradicator against you, the, these cards are already pretty useless. So it doesn't yeah. even, even matter. But you're really only clearing birth and the field spell ever those are the only cards that you're really gaining value off of it everything else they'll probably just chain but you're remember when you play the card you're trading the card out you're one for wanting at the very least uh so it's it's not that great and they're not they're not a back row heavy deck either yeah i agree like the one thing you could get value is if it's a mirror match and you can like snipe a book of moon that set or something but that's really about it right like i mean that, that hey that's a that's a whole that's a play stopper right there so you know very fair, fair yeah. enough fair enough uh next up we have triple tech. Hmm. It's good. I, I mean, you, you get yeah, I want to hear your thoughts because I know it can be really, really good to the point of a blood. But if they have like Lance or something, then you're kind of you're, like, you're kind of you kind of use the wrong effect is what I'm going to try and say. Yeah, it's a uh, you know, pray for no. This is a pray for no uh, pray for no Lance. <laughs> yeah, pretty much right. <laughs> I mean, if they do have, okay, if you can bait a lance out first, like if you bait their card to activate and bait out, oh, maybe there's a lance. If you play a card that would probably bait a lance out, then then it's still actually not bad. You still get to draw cards or maybe you get to rip their card, rip cards from their hand. Yeah. That's like the value that you could always get from, from the triple attack or triple thrust. But if you have triple thrust, 90% of the time, I think you're searching evenly match. <laughs> yeah, just get rid of their board. Yeah, and just, it's nice that your cards at least mandatory. So like these cards probably won't be dead. Yeah. But it's just like... <laughs> how much value you can get and i'm just gonna put this right here for the exact same reason pray for no lance but otherwise it is a complete blowout if you can just steal the card because there's nothing more free than an arise heart giving you a zeus <laughs> mm -hmm. and so either that or they're forced to banish it face down so it's a one for one yeah it's as a long as there's no <laughs> good trades good trades all around okay but most of the cards as you can see are pretty dedicated to cast here, but how else do they kind of, you know, spread to the other matchups? We got branded with Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon. 
I don't think it's great. Like, you can get some value. You can book Kamun the Mirror Jade to stop the effect and also turn off Mercurier. Yep. But then that kind of, like, they go Brandon and Red and they just reset, resummon it with Adlib. So you kind of end spot one. But you get, like, one value. You kind of, like, trade off the Mirror Jade, but I think that's the best you can get, right? <laughs> that's true. I would give this one... I'll give it. I'll give it both the the mediocre and the check conditional. The reason why I would say the Book of Eclipse has a little value in here is because it forces the Dragoon to trade. Right. That's true. There's also actually. the the Dragoon to, right. because it's one of the few cards that do uh, impact the Dragoon, and I think that's that's decent enough. And if they have both yeah. Dragoon and Mirror Jade, if you can bait the first negate, oh, you can turn off the entire board. But then. Yeah, they have all if they if they put up both i mean most of the time of course people when they put up dragoon it's dragoon with a uh, lubellion on the side or it's just dragoon sometimes because they actually do get rid of their own uh lubellion they put it back into the extra deck and just leave one up but that's kind of where the kaijus come in you know yeah kaijus at least can get over a dragoon that you can't otherwise yeah. out in your deck mirror j it's mainly for mirror j but otherwise it, it's pretty bad if you if you're ever gonna be going first and you want to book their cards and you never book a fusion deck it then never works yeah. <laughs> or maybe oh, you're good. star I think one. uh yeah you know it's it, the correct card would have been this this is the correct check it's you need a second card you're getting negated for sure if uh if, if, if anything evenly mattress is branded i think it kind of suffers the same problem as their cast hero where like they still keep their the problem, problem monster, monster like the, the mirror jade it's nice though when they have the full setup when they have like branded lost and branded red so you can kind of like force out the red and it, they, they lose a lot though they because they're committing a lot of resources for like you know not the most impactful interaction point true and now that i think about it if they chain red so what happens is they fuse and then on the new resolution they make the tragostopelia i think right yeah so they're kept with the mirror jade comes back and then because of ad lib, and then they have Dragos Tapila. So they make Dragos Tapila with Mirror Jade and their ad lib. They keep the Mirror Jade, um, the Dragos Tapila, and then trigger the ad lib to summon back Mirror Jade. So you still have to deal with two bodies. So yeah, it's it, not. It could be kind of kind of bad. It, it's really weird. I, I, yeah. I personally would rather have the Book of Eclipse turn off the interaction immediately rather than yeah, burn so a battle, battle phase. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's more of the. I feel like it's this, but guys in the comment section, feel free to correct us if you have an interaction line that you would like to share regarding that. Tribute-based yeah. removal. I think it's pretty good. I actually like the tribute-based removal. It, first of all, it turns off mid the... Well, at the very least, I'm going to put one check because it kills Dragoon. Mm -hmm. that, that that very much I will give. But what, what about like the other lines? Um, I think it's just like when they have Brandon Red, it's kind of unfortunate because they can just summon back, obviously, Mirror Jade with Adlib and also get like a Chimera or something. Uh, the other part is when they when you're going second, a lot of times you get gimmick puppeted. So, but I mean, that, that can yeah, be Yeah, you know what? That's actually the most fair point is the gimmick puppet. Because when you're going second, 90% of time, I do think that they are going to go for the gimmick puppet. It's so good. It is, mm -hmm. I would say, it's one of the more defining traits of the format. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put this here. I mean, it kills Dragoon. Like, I... Oh, I'm gonna give, give you guys, like, a bit of details of the past locals. I did side in, like, a Kaiju. Like, I, I made a Kaiju, but I sided in a Lava Golem, thinking that maybe he was gonna put up, like, a Mirror Jade board. And if he does that, I'm playing cash. I'll be like, oh, I'll just drop a Lava Golem, and then I'll just steal my own Lava Golem back with a big eye, drop two more monsters, attack for game. But that didn't happen, because I got hit with Gimmick Puppet. And those cards became so dead. They're so dead. But then, yes. but then, if they hit you with a gimmick puppet play, there is an interesting uh, line. The line is to use a sphere mode. They have enough oh, monsters. Sure. They have That's enough normal. monsters. Whenever they do that, they have <laughs> that third monster is coming out, and it, it, it is there to stick. Yeah. I so mean, you can hopefully survive them and maybe play the next turn. <laughs> well, in that case, you probably would be able to play the next turn. It's, it's very hard to kind of get through like putting the damage back on board is it's not the easiest yeah. and also like the they gimmick puppet also has 2k defense as well yeah they invest a lot of resources to make that play i know so they really like even branded fusion i don't know if it's enough but uh, hopefully you have ash as well <laughs> yeah well brandon like ash is the best card <laughs> but yeah. lately all most of my ashes against like the brand it's just unlucky but most of my ashes they have not no, landed properly. They uh, get hit by a call by the grave. <laughs> crossed out, called by. I got called by. I got crossed out once, and I got called by once. 
and that was wow. that was rough. That was rough. That's like, man, these cards, man. How are you I getting them? Get <laughs> uh, this is a beware gimmick puppet. Yes, beware. That card is I, that card. I think is gonna get banned. Yeah, it doesn't activate. I mean, like, There's a, basically, oh, the other thought. I mean, <laughs> once once it gets to the point where it doesn't allow interaction, it, it usually gets hit by a ban list, and that, that's just the fair point. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone, any other back removal? Are they worth playing? They can be. You can hit like you can bait. You can get rid of Lost, or you can hit the Brandon Red. But I don't know how. I think you're, I think you're still getting hit by a gimmick puppet. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or the mirror jade is still there, and you're still kind of crying about that. So uh, I don't think they're that good. Yeah, they're, that's, it doesn't really do any triple tech. Hmm. Gimmick puppet doesn't activate. It's true. You're going, these are going I, second, so. But they might use. Uh, they might also special back a luber and try to get the surge. I know sometimes. But they, they do, do that. that too. But then if they do that during the draw phase, they can't. Oh, you're right. You can't do triple it. Tech. You can do the other one, but you can't use tactics. Yeah, I don't. Use... I don't. I don't. I don't think this is. Well, if you get thrust, yeah. what are you gonna get off of that thrust? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's not. Yeah, it's probably not the best, honestly. Even stealing stuff is not ideal. They can kind of modulate what you steal by using branded in red. And they can even like mirror jade with their own cards if they. Yeah, mirror jade own card, and it's like oh, okay, you get nothing. Uh, yeah, a lot of go like going second because of the gimmick puppet play existing. You're better off putting in like can traps and stop that whole play from going through. Exactly, like you're yeah. like this shows that going second cards against branded is vi it's very difficult to side against them. But there is one card I'm going to suggest. Even if you're going second, I know it's 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 in the going first list. It's Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. Yes, that is the mystic mind. It is missing. <laughs> that is the one card where even if you go second you will be able to win the game because they will not be able to play. They're under basically Mystic Mind forever. And yeah. the Branded deck, unless they play Branded Beast, they don't have an option to actually That's out it. Only out, yeah. I, I actually tried it out in putting in my cash tier. Yeah, oh, it, oh, it's like stopped your level sevens. I'm like, sure, but I can overlay my monsters. Like, uh, Branded can't overlay their monsters. <laughs> wow, it's the type of card that your opponent would reach across the table and read like five times before slowly just the slow realization they don't have an out in their deck. Yeah, that, that like, and even if you get hit by the gimmick puppet, you don't care because you're not dying and they can't attack. It's like, yeah, honestly, as long as you can set a bunch of cards to protect it from the chimera of the end phase. No, the thing the is, I die. don't even think they can chimera it. Chimera can't activate; it's too high level. True. I guess before, as long as you can flip it up before it comes. Yeah, it, as long as you can, as long as uh, you can get there, it's a, uh, it's something that you have to protect. 100. percent You have to protect it from Chimera, but it, it would be yeah. worth it. It's in the going first card, so you know what? We'll talk about it more later. Uh, Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. Labyrinth, Book of Moon, Book of Eclipse. I think Book of Eclipse has some value. The purpose of that is to mainly just dodging skill drain to re-enable yeah, some of definitely. your effects. So in that case, it's good. Book of Eclipse can also kind of you know remove the uh, the fiends uh, yeah, being face up. Involved. But this is mainly to yeah. counterplay uh, skill yeah, drain. I love that. Like a Fenrir attack. Yep, Fenrir Target attack. Scout. Yep, chain book that's the that's one of the best ways to play and also it's also one of the ways to stop the dogmatica punishment from popping an extra card oh, sure. or yeah, even so or even popping a card so that's why the book of moons they they still have a lot of value in general and uh next one here is the evenly match let's just put this right here because yes. uh if you don't negate <laughs> this you're a hundred percent you're probably winning <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't think uh uh you're gonna lose because they are they're forced to activate the big welcome just to bounce the card back into their hand right away so they can maintain some value yes that's that's really it and everything else well they're they're going away for good tribute removal thoughts it's not well it's playable i mean you can tribute off the big lady that can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects while they control set cards yeah so yeah, it might be like an option that you have to get rid of that by all means possible. Yeah, it kills Lady, and that's that itself is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think that that does give us good value, especially when we lower the attack because she's she's her stats are really really high. Oh yeah, especially under skill drain, you're just staring at it and like, oh, I have nothing. And next one, back row removal. Okay, I'll just put a check. It's just, it's a back row yeah, deck, it's back row removal. It, it's self-explanatory. 
Absolutely, and we can chain block Lady with Cosmic too, so it's just like so much value. Triple attack, does this work against this matchup? Can we time it? Can we time it right? Yeah, maybe you could time it because they do use monster effects on your our turn, right? Like because you're special lady. summoning lady, lady coming sometime. back, lady trying to get lady. a second trap. Yeah, exactly. So like maybe we can draw into some of our blowout cards, like maybe like evenly or like the cosmics and harpies. So I guess it depends, but yeah, conditional is probably a good way to put it. <laughs> Wait for lady, or if they go welcome into yeah, welcome to Ariana or something. Uh, change of heart is pretty bad. Yeah, you can't yeah, target. You can't target their stuff. It's it becomes really difficult. Although if they do have skill drain now, change of heart becomes like infinitely better. Just all of a sudden, we can all, of a sudden all of a sudden, yeah, all of a sudden you can just just target their monster, and you just gain yourself like what a three k like a twenty nine beat stick out of yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, Runic Naturia. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Spell cards. I'm all. I'm always going to put a star on any spell card in this matchup. Yeah, Nature of Beast says you can't play spells. So yeah, eh. yeah. You have to every single matchup here. You have to answer to Nat Beast. Otherwise, you just automatically lose anyway. Yeah. See, the nice thing that I noticed about this deck is like a lot of times to get into their Beast play, sometimes they don't have protection. So sometimes they do go for the Baron play, and also like it stops. Nib, because if they go like Mole Cricket and they summon out Nature Beast with Mole Cricket back, that's just like five summons. So sometimes you can get some marginal value out of like a book, but if they're putting up Beast, yeah, you can't do anything. So I definitely agree with being conditional. Yeah, Depends yeah. on what they do. <laughs> yeah, you, Which is never a good thing, because you're gambling. And basically every single other card you follow up with it is basically the second card. You have the condition yeah. that you have to clear it, and therefore you need a second card. Every yeah. single matchup here. Seems like we're going to be splitting this into the third video. Very likely, we're 22 minutes in. I'm giving you guys a little bit of time check here. But that's kind of the rundown for this one. Evenly matches is actually a pretty solid card. As long as they don't have Baron. Which is, again, a mm -hmm. second second check on this. But if you can land this card and get rid of that field spell, it does open up an opportunity in main phase 2. But you, you're going to have to crack the whip on main phase 2 and build something so strong that it's very hard to come back. But... This is only yeah. given that they have committed hard enough. Because if you don't do anything, that field spell, the Runic Fountain, is going to be a big problem. It, it, it will stop yeah. you, like, basically dead stop in your tracks. Design. Yeah, because uh, you're going to get Flashing top. Fired, you're going to get hit by a uh, mm -hmm. uh, Freezing Curse. It's, it's, it's really rough. Tribute Removal. This is actually very, very good. If you land a Lava Golem against that deck, it hurts them yep. a lot. Kaijus are not as impactful because if you kaiju away um, a natural beast, they're just gonna summon it right back with Camilla. And yeah, yeah, that's you need you need something that can kill both at the same time. And yeah, and even then, if they have Mole Cricket, it also uh, could mean that they'll revive it later in the in the turn. So you're not your entire play comes back. But mm -hmm. again, it it's still good enough for me to say like lava golem. Yeah, I agree. Or I think it's good enough. That you can actually turn on your spells at least and start playing a little bit before you commit into that Camila. Yep. Camilla. Yeah. All right. Okay. Next we have book of eclipse, book of moon versus sprites. Um, going second, it could be used as a bait card against you know the carrot negate, so it does get some value out of being in your hand it's just another non-engine card that can help bait stuff out and try and push through but you definitely do need other cards that's for sure <laughs> yeah it's, it's a it's a good bait card though i mean if it goes through yes you have a free you have a bit of a free turn to play after that and most sprite cards are not that strong to begin with so it, yeah it, it is pretty easy to clear uh evenly match you this is this is a you need us you need something to bait first you, if you don't bait yeah, something absolutely. you're never landing this card yeah, that carrot's just going to stop your evenly and your battle phase, which you're skipping. So, <laughs> yeah, got to be careful about that. So, this is got to, you got to bait the carrot. Uh, then there is the tribute based removal. Yeah, huh? it's good. It's good. <laughs> I think it's, I, yeah. I personally think it will always, it will always trade one for one. It's a permanent <laughs> forbidden chalice to some degree. Yep. Uh, you can take away the Toad, which is good. I think Lava Golem is is phenomenal in this case because you get to take up both, perhaps an IP Mascarena or maybe even like a 
uh, a ba maybe a problem monster uh, IP or uh, mannequin cat. You can take those problems yeah. out. It's nice, you get to pick what you trade it off with, which is very helpful. Um, summon it in the sprint zone, so they can't use the uh, the trap double cross to special something something back to that arrow. So just remember, yeah. put it in that zone. I <laughs> think this card gives you a lot of you know good positioning because you get the yep. you, get, you have so much control over what gets removed, and there's no there is no counter play to it on what gets mm -hmm. removed, and there's it doesn't even start a chain, which is which is essential. Yeah. Here. Back roll removal. Back roll removal. I don't know if sprites play like a lot of back row aside from like du okay. double cross. Oh, I think they usually just set one. The double cross, maybe a smashers or like a starter. Maybe an so imperm. Uh, yeah, maybe an imperm. That's really about all. I mean, see. I'll I'll give it a so. good because it, it does. It, it's like a good trade. It's like it, it yeah, simplifies the trade. game state. You pay something out. What are your thoughts on triple attack? Because I actually didn't really during the last form, like the tier limit format, it made sense to play triple tag because tier mm -hmm. just activates everything nonstop. What are your thoughts right now? I think it's quite good against Sprite, but again, you do need like something else to pair with it to obviously bait out their effects activating in the first place because they're not going to be using any effects until you kind of play into them, right, with their board. So what would you do with the what would you do with the triple tag though? I think it depends. Nine times out of ten, probably taking, so you can bait out more stuff to kind of push through the board because their boards are nowadays they're playing the Melfi stuff, so they have double cross. They can make Herald to negate stuff, and then they special summon it back with double cross. So they're having a bunch of negate cards. So aiming to take allows you to sort of bait out one by one, or like potentially take a card and try and make a Zeus with your gigantic or something. So I think taking. Okay, and based mm -hmm. off of that logic, it's kind of the same deal here. Change of heart, kind of exactly. change of heart yeah, and, and think... triple tag. I mean. Change of Heart is in triple tag, so. <laughs> okay, well, this is very comprehensive. There's actually a lot more interactions that I didn't really think of, but this actually really helps out when it comes to a lot of these matchups. Now, sure, you're ruining, unfortunately. There's really very little you can really do unless you get rid of the Nap Beast. So, yeah. Uh, that, Nap Beast. You, you probably would want uh, Imperm or uh, Kaiju to kind of handle that matchup. Cash Tira, this one is more or less solved, but like there's a bit of like the condition being that they don't have lance if they have lance the matchup becomes infinitely harder just because a lot yeah. of the stuff don't work and a lot of monsters aren't better than um a rise heart <laughs> let's, put it, yeah. let's put it that way uh um, there's a lot so and branded is the one deck that you probably don't really have much to side against because of the gimmick puppet play and it's so popular it is yeah. it's everywhere you can expect that people will do it like i I, there are some people that I thought that wouldn't do it at locals. I'm like, yeah, you're, you wouldn't do that, right? No, they they did it. Like some of the even some of the players that uh, are on more on the casual side, they're doing it, and I'm even, like, oh, wow. I'm like, yeah. okay, you know what? This is just doing it yeah, everyone's <laughs> just doing it now. I guess a free turn is a free turn. Labyrinth, <laughs> if you land the correct back row, you're pretty good. But just remember to yep. play it smart. You know, if you ever get stuck into skill drain, use your own cards to kind of flip your stuff face down. Uh, yep. That's really it because. If you can't activate effects and you're a monster dependent deck, then yeah, just consider these as better options than what you already have. Because considering that some of the stuff you already have probably won't work. <laughs> yeah, traps are good. Yep. Well, that's all I got for this one, guys. We still have one more part, which is the going first card. That's where all the spice is at. Now, um. now, Squiddy crafted this list, and he's going into some of the more you know, spicy plays, things that you can use. Yeah. Because lately, we haven't really found a lot of going first cards. I mean, people play deep air, cool. But what are some other cards you can use to kind of blow people out by going first? I mean, if you lost game one, you definitely want to win that game two. And that's what part two is about. So make sure you guys stick around for that. Don't forget to hit like, yeah. subscribe, ding that notification bell. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one.